Hey everyone, Sean here with Blue Ridge Silverhound, a uh, fellow collector and part-time dealer. Hopefully everyone's having a great great day. Um, in this video, we're going to be talking about some of the most sketchiest and shadiest eBay coin selling tactics that uh, you may not be aware of or maybe you do know about, but we're just kind of refreshing it. Uh, we're constantly seeing new people come into the marketplace. Uh, furthermore, uh, the hobby. Uh, the hobby is growing each and every single year uh, with all of the uh, attention to collectibles. And it doesn't matter what collectibles that people jump into. Um, more money is definitely being poured into the marketplace. Um, we've seen things like silver, numismatics all around. That could be coins and paper money have all seen a pretty substantial jump in uh, overall market margin within the last 18 to 24 months. Um, so being able to know exactly what to look for and kind of really trusting what you're seeing are going to be absolutely instrumental. Um, so that way you don't get separated from you and your wallet. Um, because uh, there's going to be certain instances where you can't get your money back and that's important. So knowing what to look for in advance will be instrumental for your long-term uh, collecting, uh, I, I guess, health. Uh, but, you know, a lot of the things that, that we're going to see in this video, at one point I've talked about in the past, uh, but this is more or less just a overall compilation of various things to be on the lookout for. Um, there's going to be some stuff that I'm willing to bet probably 95% of you have never heard of before. Um, but, you know, here's a few little snippets of, of various listings that at one point or another um, in the last 12 years of Blue Ridge Silverhound, I have brought up. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about everything that we have today. Uh, we have it narrowed down to, I would say, six various ty types of tactics or categories that we're going to focus on. Um, shady tactic number one, um, it says PCGS and NGC. So what exactly do we mean? Obviously, these are two of the most revered coin grading services out there. Um, furthermore, they're big companies. Collectors Universe also owns PSA Grading, which does um, uh, sports cards and trading cards and things like that. So they just recently acquired PSA, so now they're really a huge conglomerate. And I think more and more sellers are beginning to see the value of just trying to mention PCGS in the title just so they can have a little uh, kind of leg up on the keyword search uh, that people are using. And NGC, Collector Society, is big as well. Uh, they, they own CGC, which is also a big grading service for comic books um uh, you know so they, there's a lot at stake here there's a lot of money flow, floating around in the coin and currency grading scene and you need, need to know what exactly is legitimate when these two uh coin grading acronyms are being used on the open market for example we have a uh, a listing here it's a 2001 p lincoln penny centered broad strike size of a nickel PCGS worthy. Now that you'll notice here that the coins are raw. Most specifically, the subject coin is going to be that Lincoln cent and the uh, the seller uh, with the gross thumb sitting right there on the listing uh, actually put a uh, nickel right next to it to kind of show the difference in the size. Okay, I'm not disputing the fact uh, that the broad strike is a legitimate error because it is. I mean, I could see it here from a mile away. What I do kind of question is the fact that, that this seller used PCGS worthy, even though the, that grading service has nothing to do with this listing. Um, again, it, it's going to be a matter of throwing out every single keyword to help legitimize the listing. Uh, because when you type in PCGS and you know you're looking specifically for graded coins, this is going to be one of those listings that's going to end up coming up in that keyword search. So being very, very cognizant of the uh, abusive nature of using these words like PCGS is going to be important. Here's another one right here. Uh, this time for a different reason. Uh, the coin is graded. It's a 1903S Morgan Silver Dollar. It's a PCGS VF35. Things are looking good in that listing title. Original gray patina, 
Great look. Now here's where I have a little bit of an exception to this listing. CAC worthy, or we call CAC. Um, now I'm looking at the image. The graded holder doesn't have a CAC green bean or gold bean on there. Yet this particular seller managed to just throw up CAC worthy. Um, even though, again, it has nothing to do with the listing or this coin. Um, if it was CAC worthy, by the way, wouldn't the seller send it to CAC and get it authenticated from them as well? Yeah, I mean, you know, the service fee isn't really that expensive, but yet, you know, either call it laziness or just trying to save some money so that way they can make more money off this listing or potentially ask for more money for the coin because they think it's CAC worthy. And again, do not be... Uh, do not be trapped by these uh, misuse of these type of keywords. And then here's another one too. Uh, again, it doesn't have any grading terminology in the listing. Um, eBay's pretty good at sniffing out listings where they've uh, where they've identified that the seller has used PCGS, NGC, or even Annex uh, in the in the title, even though the coin is raw. All right. So um, what we have here is a 1970s. Six full steps, Jefferson Nickel, grading choice, BU. This this is a tough one. So what did the seller use here that can be construed as misleading? If you guessed using the word or words six full steps, you are absolutely right. Now, the interpretation is that six full steps, you're going to have just incredibly sharp struck steps, right? So in this particular image clip here, all we see is a photo of the obverse of the coin, right? Now, I'm not going to call out this particular seller unless we had some sort of supporting kind of um, evidence to show that this thing is anything else but six full steps. And as you can see, they did have a third image um, in this listing that shows that this coin is nowhere near close as being a full steps nickel. You could see the few couple nicks right there on the steps, which will disqualify this particular coin from grading that. But yet again, you know, a seller will throw up something that, that really has nothing to do with the coin. Um, just so they could stay in the kind of like keyword search criteria um, that a lot of folks will commonly use in their everyday coin buying searches. All right, shady tactic number two uh, is going to be the use of what we call PCGS crossover. Now, this is less of an issue compared to the other five on the list as far as sketchy and shady but we're going to bring it up here because this could potentially be an issue in the future um, as more people are aware of crossover and this is probably a term that is more prevalent in sports card grading than it is in coin grading uh, for a myriad of reasons uh, because there are so many more different card grading services aside from PSA and BGS I think there's probably another five to seven, like HGA, um, SGC, and a few others, uh, that the crossover terminology really means that, you know, you could take this, this coin or this card or this piece of currency that grades X, and then you could cross it over to the, you know, kind of like the elite service, which is PCGS or PSA. Uh, PCGS has always been that gold standard grading company. So normally when you have a coin that grades mint state 65 uh, through another grading company that's kind of like on the low end of the totem pole and then they cross it over to PCGS and it comes back the same grade, that'll actually enhance the value of that coin that grades out through PCGS. Um, here's a few examples. Uh, again, this is less of an issue. We, I've only found a few listings on eBay. This is one of them. This is a 79D Susan B. Anthony dollar. Uh, this one actually grades ICG, Mint State 68, top pop one. Um, first and foremost, not a lot of people grade through ICG. There's not that kind of like volume where top pop is really a meaningful thing. Uh, anytime an ICG or an annex graded coin comes up in a eBay listing. Uh, NGC pop one, and again, there it is. PCGS pop zero crossover. So, you know, they threw that in there with a question mark like, hey, 
you know, we have this beautiful coin with lots of towing. And don't get me wrong, this is a nice looking coin. Um, but they threw in PCGS and NGC and crossover as kind of keywords to, to make this a very thought-provoking listing. Like, buy it for $1,200 or make an offer, maybe get it for 1000 bucks. Send it to PCGS and, hey, if it comes back a 68, you might have a $10,000 coin with this kind of toning on there. Um, again, it, it's all in the little details. And if you're aware of something like this, do not fall for these type of traps. Um, the oftentimes crossovers are, are, are not, not necessarily impossible, but they're unrealistic. Um, because if, if it is crossover worthy, why didn't the seller simply cross it over to PCGS and then resold it at whatever grade it comes back? Something to keep in mind. Uh, and then here's another one here. Uh, we have a 1909 Annex graded Mid-State 65 Red Lincoln set. Uh, shows no problem to cross over to PCGS. Again, PCGS has nothing to do with this listing. It's in an older original holder annex uh, uh, slab. Uh, again, you can see it right there, plain as day. $185. Um, even if it crossed over to PCGS as a, say, 65 red, you know, you're only going to be making probably about an additional 50 bucks. But you also have to consider the submission fees. You have to consider the uh, insurance if that's appropriate. You know, like uh, paying up for registered mail if you set this out through the USPS. So there's a lot of things that'll nickel and dime uh, into the profitability of such a coin. That where you know sometimes it just doesn't make any sense at all. So again, avoid crossover keywords in graded coins. Uh, you'll you'll thank me later. All right, shady tactic number three uh, is PQ. Uh, man, this has been one of the most abused keywords in eBay in recent memory. I would have to say within the last five years, the term PQ, which stands for premium quality, is incredibly overused. Uh, it's like um, in the sports card world, uh, naming every single card near mint or gem mint, even though they're not graded, Every single listing, if you can imagine someone using the, you know, the term mint on every single uh, uh, card or pack fresh, you know, it's over, over abused and it really dilutes down um, the just uniqueness factor of these items that are being sold. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few um, coins where the term PQ is overused. Now, one thing I will say. When you're typing out listings, you want to try and avoid using um, all caps uh, because as as humans, psychologically, we are we have learned to read, um, you know, as uh, you know, as normal kind of like um, just writing dictates. You know, you have a capital letter for you know proper uh, proper nouns and names and stuff like that, and then everything else is lowercase. Um, when you use all caps, it's kind of like you're overemphasizing on something. Um, and then within all that, something that gets lost is the fact that they added PQ. This is a 1971S um, NGC set of Cameo. Uh, what is that? It's a Cameo proof set. Uh, all graded proof 69 UCAM uh, for $7,000. And uh, hey, what do you know? It's not worth $7,000. Not even close. Uh, 71S is not as tough of a date as you would indicate for Ultra Cameo. And uh, these are NGC graded coins. NGC is a little bit more liberal when it comes to assigning Ultra Cameo. And, uh, you know, the fact that they threw in Top Hop and PQ, these again are over abuse terminologies uh, for, for these coins uh, and especially these listings. Now, here's another one here as well, uh, 53S Jefferson Nickel and GC Mac, all right, so that they also have a, a Mac, which is a modern uh, grading certification service, kind of like CAC, only it's all moderns. Uh, this one is graded Mint State 65 through NGC, but they threw in 4FS and PQ, extremely rare, $20,000 in full steps. Well, yeah, it's twenty grand. If it's FS through NGC and not Mac. Again, Mac is a service that you throw money at and they will put anything on a slab as your heart desires. 
4FS, you know, really has no marketability in these coins. Although Mac, the certification company, has done wonders on non strike designated coins. Um, you know, like the uh, 2019 and 2020 West Point quarters, Mac does a great job of just kind of throwing in the extra quality assurance. Um, and the only thing I don't like about Mac is they do things like this with 4FS. I'm like, that's not full steps. In the real world, it's not. And um, they also use PQ as well as its own designated sticker. And I think it's just, it, it's lame. <laughs> and it, it really adds nothing to the market except a lot of headaches when you're trying to search coins out like this. Uh, but in reality, what we have here is a non full steps nickel that's probably worth less than a $1,000. Um, if you somehow, some way you're able to cross this over, you know, or crack it out and send it back to NGC. And if it's even remotely close to getting five full steps, the seller would have done that. Um, but again, you know, they, this is just a uh, over marketing scheme. You, you know, the combination of using PQ along with Mac and then, you know, uh, paying them X amount of dollars. They're not going to say no. All right. They're going to do exactly as you say. And uh, this is just going to be another listing that you need to be on the lookout for. And then here's PQ being used on, guess what? A raw coin. PQ. It doesn't matter uh, what date or what the coin looks like as long as it's not graded pq should not be in that listing title again it's very misleading we have an 1884 p morgan dollar that's not graded all right and uh furthermore the coin looks like it's going to be marginally an au 58 maybe a mid state 61 at best it is a slider and it's not pq it's not what i consider to be a premium quality coin by any stretch but as you can see it's got a couple hours left 16 bids at 34 dollars it's going to sell exactly as you would expect with or without the pq uh, and they even put pl proof like um that's another overused term you know in uh in these coins especially morgan dollars where uh, there's a lot of dates for pre uh, for proof like surfaces like 1881s things like that again just another uh, another instance of over abuse uh, overuse of pq all right shady tactic number four look out for them bogus errors and varieties this is a big one uh considering that people have been um just misdiagnosing their coins especially folks that are new to the hobby that that are really blinded by the dollars and cents and the the, the potential at what the coin hobby can do for you um and this is something because i do the pcmr report twice a week um, you see these you, you know you, you come across these i come across them as i do my data and my research um but here's one such example now keep in mind this is a graded coin uh, 1986p 50 cent genuine vf details 98 damage error um 140 grand and uh <laughs> yeah that that's a little bit outside of the normal range for a damaged coin and um if you look at the uh, actual detail part of it further down the listing uh the seller mentioned that missing number pcgs said it's 1986 p i think it's a 66 either way it's missing numbers uh but it's really damaged and uh damage as in it was probably uh heat induced damage uh because it did warp the coin a little bit at in that particular area uh and you know it's funny because the, the seller did not show a full picture of the slab okay they just put in the true views and I, I wouldn't even know why you would even pay to do a true view on this uh but of course you guys know a 66 is a 40 percent silver half dollar this is clad and it still looks clad even in this picture so again keep an eye out for things like this um it's just it's unfortunate but at the same time there these things are always gonna be in eBay, you just need to be able to identify them as they come down to listings. And here's another one right here. Uh, believe it or not, the this seller pegged down the actual variety really well. This is indeed a legitimate 1942D over horizontal D variety. Uh, this is actually quite a scarce variety as well. Um, but what I do question is the fact that this seller labeled this as 
some sort of unique type of appearance or look to the coin called a zombie Jefferson lamination error. When in reality, what we see here is damage. This is all damaged. It's unfortunate. Again, you have you have whatever happened on Jefferson's face right there, which is not uh, indicative of a legitimate lamination um, event. Uh, plus, you have a bunch of scratches all, all around the coin right there. Um, but again, th this particular seller seller uh, really tried hard to um, make this one extraordinary, uh, even if if lying about it. Um, it you know, and twenty five thousand dollars is a very high starting price, even for a non problem free D over horizontal D five cent piece. Um, and it's not even graded. So, you know, uh, usually for this particular variety, it would have to be like a mid-state 64 full steps for it to command uh, five figures. So, uh, again, uh, one in which uh, with a high price tag can fool certain people, uh, especially those that, that have the money and the means to pay for some of these coins. Uh, this one right here, straight up, uh, no explanation whatsoever of what the error is on this 53S nickel. Um, high starting price, $14,000, $77 for shipping. Like, you know, are, are you going to drive it to me or fly over to my, uh, you know, my home and hand it to me? Uh, I mean, yeah, th this one, again, th no explanation whatsoever what the error is. Just keep in mind that these are out there. And um, another shady thing that people like to do uh, and I believe this particular seller has zero feedback is that they will, they will bid on their own items to show an artificial market for their coin. Um, and then they'll relist it later on, like in a week or two. Um, uh, again, just another thing to keep an eye out on. And then finally we have this one. Uh, it, it's not an error or variety, but this seller had mentioned this 2003 P Roosevelt dime strong pitted obverse reverse mint error um 10 cent us coin rare okay so what we actually have here is just extreme dye deterioration which is neither a variety or error it's just the dyes had worn down quite a bit and they're ready to be changed um and you know when it strikes coins it's gonna have a lot of heavy metal flow and that's exactly what you have here um 34.95 is, is about a lot of money too too much for this coin uh this is a coin that's worth pretty close to face value anything with machine doubling or dye deterioration things of that nature uh, are generally not worth a whole lot probably you know maybe double face value for someone who's really interested to have a heavy example of that coin all right, shady tactic number five, uh, low pop, which stands for low population. And that really is more uh, in tune or in line with graded coins. Um, this one right here is a 1909 P VDB Lincoln cent uh, key date. Not too much of a key date as you would expect. A lot of these were saved in gem BU condition when they first came out. Although it is, it is an NGC mid state 65 red brown. Low pop, highest grades. Again, they're leveraging these key words like low pop and grades and all that stuff um, to put a lot more emphasis on their listing. Uh, doing a little bit of research, I've come to the conclusion that NGC's population report has this coin in this particular grade in red-brown at 1,707 pieces graded uh, with many more uh, finer in red-brown. So um, again, 1,707 may not seem like a lot, but in, in the coin world, that's a pretty hefty number considering that maybe the next grade down or grade up, like a mid-state 66 red-brown, the population's around 450. Um, so, you know, that's the coin probably you want to invest more in and not so much this one that you see here. But again, they threw in low population because at that point it's really subjective. Okay. Plus, you know, they're really hinging on the fact that you don't know how to pull a population report through NGC or PCGS. So there is that as well. And then here's another one here too, actually from the same seller, a 68D Kennedy half dollar, near superb BU, mid-state 66, low pop, highest grades. I mean, where'd we hear that before? Uh, offered up for 90 bucks. 
And uh, again, doing some research on the population reports through NGC's website shows this particular grade, 664 in mid-state 66. And then there's uh, about another 150 more graded finer than this. So again, not a low pop graded coin. Uh, 90 bucks is way too high for this. It, it's worth around $25 in a mid-state 66, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, again, that's that's just getting the keywords out there so that way you more people will find their listings and then finally the last shady tactic is going to be unsearched or original i mean you guys have heard this before i feel like i'm regurgitating information to you guys um but there you go unsearched roles have always been a problem for over 20 years pretty close to when ebay was was born you know um, coins were being sold. It was, it was actually one of the biggest things being sold back in the late 90s and early 2000s. And unsearched rolls continue to be a thorn in everybody's backside. Um, these coins, these rolls are never really truly unsearched. Um, it's really easy to pick up the crimping machine to be able to manufacture and see these rolls uh, as you would see fit. Um, you know, and then picking up Indian head cents on the secondary market is cheap. You know, common dated Indian head cents will run you less than 50 cents and you just throw those on the enders, crimp them up, call it a day. And then there you go. You're going to be making 18 bucks a pop for every one that you sell. Um, these coins will have nothing in them. Don't get excited. Avoid these at all costs, even if you're a new collector. And then here's another one right here. Unsearched bag of Lincoln Wheat Cents. I mean, are they really truly unsearched? If I were a coin dealer, I would probably go through these bags just to make sure that there is no 09 SVDBs, 14Ds, 31Ss, some real key dates. Uh, because you really don't want to do that. And oftentimes, these are 99.999% searched. Uh, it's unfortunate, and when you look at bags like this, I mean, when you, do they have the black zip ties? These are not original to the period in which these would be unsearched. Um, so, you know, look at the finer details like that and bid accordingly. Uh, $325 for a 5,000 count bag um, is about 75 bucks too high. Uh, the average rate for wheat scent bulk lots is five cents a piece, and that's only because there is a mix of 09s, teens, and 20s in this bulk lot. And how in the world do you get a seated Liberty dime on a penny roll ender? I mean, you can't. You never could. You never could do that back in the day either. Um, you know, bank employees back in the 40s and 50s notice things like this. So again, this is artificial seeding of these rolls. And uh, again, there's our good old keyword unsearched in the listing title. Uh, buyer beware. This one's bid up to 50 bucks with 12 bids. You're not going to find any more silver in this roll. As a matter of fact, you'll probably end up finding a bunch of common dated wheat cents in the middle of that uh, roll. So again, not something that you should be really targeting. And then here's another one, a very common issue, and this was actually a very common problem back in the mid-2000s, like 2005, 2006. Um, seated rolls with key date enders. Uh, this particular roll has a 1914D Lincoln wheat scent, which by itself, based off of the condition of that coin, is worth about $175. And just assume that the middle coins in that roll is going to be all common dates. They'll probably even throw in a few like uh, P-minted teens and 20s in there. It really won't make any difference. But as you can see, a few naive folks bid this one up. 85 bids at $443. Um, someone is going to be getting taken to the woodshed. Uh, and what's even funnier, if you read that little condition note there on the listing, this gift will make your collector cry. Uh, yeah, I do believe that. <laughs> so uh, th this is something to, to be aware of. Again, these are artificially seeded to, to be promoted as something that it's really not. All right, so just beware of these. And then finally, we're going to just finish it off from using the word original um, in the listing. And uh, this is a 1921P peace dollar. I mean, it is a key date, and it's uh, actually pretty well struck, but... 
Um, they did use the fresh from original role uh, argument in this. As you guys know, these old early dollars were stored in canvas bags. They weren't in rolls. Uh, they were in rolls probably as recently as the 50s. Um, but the with the artificial distressing that some of these sellers are putting onto the actual roll paper. And keep in mind, you can buy all the old roll paper that you want on the secondary market. People are selling those. They're even selling the fake ones too, and they actually look good. Uh, but just make sure that you're aware of things like this. Uh, you know, and the, the pictures are certainly juiced up a little bit. Um, the, the coin shows up a lot of the white luster but again the fields are very dark you don't really know if there's like maybe a, a well-placed scratch or hit on the coin until you receive it um so make sure you're aware uh it, it's going to be a real uh time waster if you receive this coin you inspect it and it's nothing what you imagine you have to send it back you have to pay for the shipping and you know drive to the post office and things like that just just try and avoid some of the uh most um unreasonable listings and you should go no wrong but ladies and gentlemen that's kind of a uh, a detailed look at some of the shady and sketchy practices that are being utilized on ebay to this day if we came back and revisited the same topic five or ten years from now nothing's going to change um ebay doesn't really have a uh, an advocacy advocacy group anymore um that looks you know, after coin, uh, coin listings, uh, they used to have one about 10 years ago, uh, but that, that went away. Uh, so make sure that you're using your due diligence. You know what you're looking for. You're being, ex you're being very optimistic, but at the same time, cautious when you're going into these listings. Um, uh, but make sure you ask a friend. All right. I, as far as, you know, is this legit? Should I even bid on this? You know, what are my alternatives? Things like that. And you'll, you'll do okay. But that's going to go ahead and do it, guys. I'm Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Hopefully you got a few important takeaways, a little educational lesson I want to be on the lookout for. Uh, but you guys take care. Coinaholics, we are discovering together. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next video.